Let's go ahead. Good morning and welcome to the Valley Economic Alliance Next Level Growth Webinar. We're very thrilled to have you all here with us this morning. Um, my name is Sonia Blake and I run the Alliance. Uh, and for those of you who don't know about the work of the Alliance, we uh, uh, promote economic development and workforce development and just general great quality of life by helping people connect to tools and resources to become upwardly mobile, to become financially self-sufficient, and to really be contributing members of our beloved five city region, which includes Burbank, Glendale, Calabasas, the San Fernando Valley region of the city of Los Angeles and the city of San Fernando. So we're very thrilled that you joined us today because we have a wonderful program put together. I do want to thank our sponsors. Our programs are free uh, with our business assistance program. So we're so thankful that we're able to do that because we have sponsors who help us. So uh, we're thrilled that Wells Fargo is one of our lead sponsors at the Alliance and also the San Fernando Valley Business Journal. We have a wonderful grant from the U.S. Small Business Administration that also helps us to put on these programs and to keep them free. Additional sponsor include Mori and Company Insurance, Mission Valley Bank, CMTC, and a company named PayScout based here, a tech startup company based here in the Valley uh, that's really very uh, helpful for us. So I want to invite you all, if you own a business and you're looking for free business coaching, very reputable, credible business coaching to help you gain access to capital, uh, revamp your marketing, find qualified staff, locate real estate in the Valley, all kinds of business topics, then I encourage you to enroll in our business assistance program, which is at no cost to you, and you can get information at thevalley.net slash assistance. Just so you know, we often get this question, the replay and the slides will be available um, on the Alliance's website at thevalley.net slash events. So you'd go there and you'd look for past events and then you'll be able to see the replay and or slides with whatever our, our speakers are making available. Well, as you know the saying, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And taxes are very real and have real implications for our business owners. So when we wrap our brains around tax credits, we really are opening up a treasure trove and uh, a source of income and recapturing revenues uh, through that very strategic uh, way of, of, uh, of operating. So tax credits are the subject of our program today, and we're really excited that we're going to be able to help businesses in our region to take advantage of this wonderful program to really help increase uh, the bottom line. So let's dive in. I'd like to introduce you to a treasured member of the Alliance's Board of Directors, Steve Contreras with Wells Fargo Bank, who will introduce you to today's speaker. Um, Steve, over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Sonia. And uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to be able to introduce our keynote speaker today. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I work for Wells Fargo. I'm a senior district manager. Uh, it supports 11 branches and really in the northern part of the San Fernando Valley. Uh, I'm really honored to be a part of the Alliance as well as Wells Fargo is really excited to be able to support all of the work that the Alliance delivers to the communities that we serve. Uh, I'm a native of the San Fernando Valley and I support branches that I used to manage. So being able to work directly with small business customers um, is really a passion of mine to really help them grow and foster an environment where they could thrive. Uh, I'm really excited to introduce our keynote speaker today, uh, Gil Gonzalez, president of SubCity, a former appointee of Governor Brown uh, in the California Office of Business and Economic Development, directly negotiated over $150 million in economic incentives on behalf of hundreds of businesses with over $1.7 billion in capital expenditures, author of Government Incentives, tax credits, grants, cash refer, uh, re reimbursements, and financing the Insider's Guide to Government Funding for Your Small Business. So with that, it's my honor to turn the presentation over to Gil Gonzalez. Thanks, Stephen. I'm not gonna make you repeat that book title uh, three times in a row, because it's uh, <clears throat> very long. I gotta shorten that up. But uh, yeah, so thank you, Stephen, for the intro. Thanks to VEA. Um, have a long-standing relationship with VEA and really excited about uh, what uh, Sony and the team have planned uh, going forward. So 
Today, what we're going to talk about, um, and I just want to make sure, Erica, can you give me a thumbs up if you could see my screen? Okay, great. So today, what we're going to talk about is this kind of uh, vague alphabet soup that sometimes small businesses hear about kind of government incentives. And uh, the agenda for today is one, I'll share a little bit about uh, subsidy, what we're working on, but more importantly, uh, just kind of a, a high level overview of government incentives 101. And then secondly, uh, and it's quite appropriate just because the round just opened uh, Monday of this week is we're going to dive into Cal Competes, the Cal Competes tax credit, which many of you probably heard about um, from various folks. And I'll just share kind of what it is, uh, funding dates, and just some kind of insider's tips, if you will. I've helped a lot of companies apply for Cal Competes, both successfully and unsuccessfully. So uh, we'll chat about that in a, in a minute. And then we're going to leave time for questions. I, I find that uh, whether you're a small business owner who's on, on the Zoom or you're a consultant that's working with small business owners, uh, the group usually learns uh, not by me talking, but by some of the questions that are asked by other folks on the call. So we'll leave those towards the end, and I believe Sonia will uh, gather those together. So um, anyways, I'll get started. You already uh, kind of got my background. Uh, we launched Subsidy formally about seven months ago. We helped America's small businesses apply and collect tax credits. Uh, manage cash flow and grow the value of your company. Um, and you're going to kind of hear how we do that. Um, our background, I've obviously come from working in the public sector, but my two co-founders come from Google and Pandora. Um, and then our software engineers, Venmo and a couple other organizations. And then you see Brianna in the, in the middle, who's the backbone of our organization because she does all things customer facing. Um, so far, uh, since launching Subsidy about seven months ago, we've helped 36 companies get about $18 million in tax credits and other incentives. Um, it's something that we're very proud of because we're all mission, we, our company is mission oriented. We're super focused on uh, uh, democratizing access to these programs and helping small businesses thrive. Uh, here's our three product areas before I kind of get into the incentives uh, 101. Um, we have a cash flow dashboard and forecasting planner. So if you have several bank accounts, you probably could get the access to that in QuickBooks. We do integrate with QuickBooks or your accounting system um, and or your ERP, and we can put all of your uh, um, accounts into one single dashboard so you can see uh, what your cash position is, but also a forecast. Uh, moving forward, secondly, we have project level profitability tools. So companies that are making things, or even if you're a construction company, service-based business, and you want to get granular insight into your profitability, we have a tool. And then thirdly, uh, which is obviously our core business, this is the incentives and credits. So uh, economic incentives 101. So each year, and I'll, I'll just, I want to put a footnote to this, is outside of COVID-related relief that's come down uh, through Congress the past two years, um, there's about 100 to $140 billion from the federal, state, and local government that's available in the form of tax credits. Um, well, incentives, rather. Uh, these, these incentives, uh, quote unquote, usually fall under uh, three different buckets. There's uh, tax credits slash deductions, one of which we're going to talk about today, uh, the Cal Competes tax credit. Um, there's financing options, low interest loans. And then of course there's grants. I always like to tell folks, especially small business owners, because they'll ask me, well, what sort of grants are out there? That's a very minuscule, uh, very small percentage. I'd probably say less than 2% of the available funds that are out there are in the form of grants, okay? And I'll highlight one LA County grant, which some of you probably already know about uh, shortly. So the reason why we started subsidy is because 97% of these funds go to big businesses, companies with over 500 employees, and we're on a mission to change that. Companies under 500 employees, whether you have two employees or 200, you also qualify for many, if not all of these programs as well. So the way that we break this down um, is there's two real big kind of silos of incentives. There's off the shelf, which are legislative in nature, we call them off the shelf meaning that just so long as you check the box and fit the qualification and criteria for the program, uh, you can apply for it and you're likely um, almost guaranteed to be awarded the program. So an example of that is obviously the R&D tax credit. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's a federal and state R&D tax credit that you can take. The employee retention tax credit, which uh, many of you, if you haven't already, you certainly want to take a look at that and contact your CPA or we can help you with that as well. Um, but those are just as long as you meet the qualifications, you can qualify for those um, and take advantage of them. 
The other silo of incentives um, are asked for, um, which are discretionary in nature. And discretionary means that there is a government entity or a body um, that you have to apply for. It's very competitive in nature. The Cal Competes Tax Credit is one of these programs. You're not guaranteed to get this program. Um, and it's also probably these discretionary programs, whether it's at the federal or state level, represent about 20 to 25 percent of the available funds each year. Um, counties, uh, states sometimes have these programs. As I said, Cal competes in Texas. They have the Texas Enterprise Fund, um, but the list goes on and on. So there's discretionary programs. And like I said, off the shelf slash legislative ones. And you're gonna have to excuse me because I, I uh, have some, I got a cold. So I'm probably gonna have to drink some water if I cough in your ear, uh, just mute me. Um, <clears throat> so the main triggers for incentives, a lot of folks believe that, oh, okay, um, there's these government dollars out there. So therefore I just fill out a one page application and uh, a check's gonna arrive in the mail. Now, um, most, if not all, I'd say 99% of these program dollars uh, that the government has allocated in the budget both federal, state, and local, um, are for economic development activity. So to create jobs, to promote a capital investment, to revi revitalize communities. So here are the main triggers for any incentive, whether it's off the shelf uh, and or discretionary, uh, the ask for incentive. So creating jobs, hiring folks, even if it's one employee, upskilling, training those employees, um, buying equipment, leasing or purchasing um, uh, any real estate office space, manufacturing space, et cetera, of the expansion of operations. Um, and then um, there's a big emphasis on exporting as well. So helping um, domestic manufacturers or companies do business abroad. Um, and then also what I like to point out too is the area that you're located in your geographic region has an impact on what sort of incentives you qualify for, whether you're in a designated geographic area, uh, or an area that has 120% or X amount percent above the poverty area, then that actually puts you higher up on the, on the list of programs that you qualify for. <laughs> so with that said, <clears throat> in my experience, especially with small business owners, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter what sort of business you're in, whether you're a manufacturer or service-based business, um, here are the top six underutilized programs. <clears throat> now, if you are a, a retail shop, like a coffee shop or a restaurant, um, some of these aren't necessarily going to apply to you. Um, I'd say the R&D tax credit probably isn't going to apply to you. But if you're doing any sort of manufacturing, um, even if it's small batch, if you're a large scale manufacturer, um, software developer, um, all most of those activities uh, can potentially qualify for R the R&D tax credit. And as I said before, there's a federal R&D tax credit and there's also a state of California R&D tax credit. The work opportunity tax credit as well, um, especially if you're in, um, well, I won't highlight the sectors, but that's a federal program um, that you can take advantage of. The employee retention tax credit, which many of you probably know about, employee train employment training panel dollars, uh, which is ETP. Um, which is sponsored by the state of California for upskilling and reskilling employees. Um, the partial sales tax exemption, if you're going to be purchasing manufacturing uh, related equipment, um, you can take 4% off either the sales tax or use tax, um, of which is pretty easy to do. Um, and then the Cal Competes tax credit, which is the focus of today. Um, the number six, obviously, I'll go through that today. The other five, um, I'm going to send out, Erica, a uh, kind of one pager that highlights a little bit more in depth what each program is and just kind of does a quick FAQ so you can understand if it's something that you should be looking at or not. So the Cal Competes Tax Credit Program, as I said, it's um, discretionary in nature, it, administered by GoBiz, the office that I used to work for in the governor's office. Um, this round just opened up on Monday. There's about $99.7 million available. Um, the deadline, I want to say, is in three weeks. Um, we'll go through the timeline shortly. Um, and then what the Cal Capete's tax credit uh, committee is looking for. What I like to tell folks, though, is one is just because you check the box and are qualified to apply for this program, um, it's very competitive in nature. Um, and you'll see some of the criteria shortly. 
you will not get this tax credit um, and or be awarded it until the committee meets June 15th of this year to grant the awardees. Uh, so I just want to be very clear. This isn't something that happens in a couple of weeks. Um, there's 12 formal um, uh, criteria that you need to, or boxes you need to check that the committee and the application uh, vetters are looking for. You can see all of them listed here. And of course, you'll get a copy of this uh, presentation. The main ones that I want to draw attention to are the number of jobs that you're creating or retaining. Um, what is the salary of those uh, jobs? The amount of capital investment, as I said before, that's furniture, fixture equipment, that's real estate that you're leasing or purchasing. Um, and then the last one down below, or not towards the middle, incentives in other states. Uh, I like to tell people that um, this program, although the state would not say this officially, is really turned into a business retention tool. So if you are looking to move jobs out of the state, then you're going to take much higher priority over those companies that are just looking to stay here, um, grow here, and there is no threat of you leaving uh, California to make this investment and or hire outside of the state of California. So uh, I just want to draw your attention to that and draw a lot of attention to that because this has turned into a business retention tool. Um, the documents needed, and we don't need to go too far into this because both subsidy can help you with that if you decide to work with us, um, and I'll show you how to do that uh, shortly, um, and or you'll go through the uh, CalCompete's tax credit portal, which I'll show you as well. Um, but before you go register and open up your application, here are some of the documents that you're going to need, your payroll records uh, for any FTEs. Um, and then... Uh, the second bullet point here, I don't want you to get discouraged by it because whenever I see business plan that kind of uh, makes me think of some two inch stack of documents that have a go to market strategy and exec executive summary, that's not what they're looking for. They're just looking for uh, some basic information about what your business is going to be doing over the next three to five years. Projected full-time uh, employees, uh, their job qualification, salaries, CapEx, um, that sort of stuff, and of course, where you're doing it. We have a spreadsheet that we send out, a questionnaire um, that we can send you. You can fill out before you start the application yourself, or you can do this in the subsidy platform, and the whole application is within our platform. So let's just say that you want to create your own account. You can do this today. Um, when you get this soft copy of this presentation, you can click on that hyperlink. Uh, calcompetes.ca.gov. Um, it's going to ask you to enter your email address. Um, <clears throat> excuse me a second. And once you enter your email address, it's going to email you a uh, unique uh, link to log in to the CalCompetes tax credit. That's tax credit application portal. That's why it says uh, email key down there. Um, I always like to tell folks that you're not going to have uh, your, the only thing that's going to remain constant is your email address. Your password is going to be unique every single time, and you're going to have to log in and click email key um, and or I already have a key, and that's what's going to let you back into the portal. You do not have to complete the entire application in one setting. You can come back and complete it just as long as everything is completed before the deadline. Uh, it's, oh, there we go. Um, you're going to see this is some of the basic information. Um, now, this is for creating the basic account so that you can start the application, but all of this information is pretty straightforward. Uh, your business name, um, it's going to ask for your uh, HQ address and all that sort of good stuff. And then, of course, if you have somebody that's working with you, whether there's consultants on this call or CPAs or accountants, um, and somebody from your office is going to help you. You can add their email addresses as well so that uh, they can log in and support you in your application. Or, as I said before, Subsidy can do the same. Uh, much of this information, um, Subsidy pulls from uh, your company and we pre populate this for you. That's one of kind of the values of working with Subsidy. So, award phase. Um, I always tell folks that the goal is to not get shut out from the start um, so that you can continue on and be competitive through phase two um, for the program. Um, just because I also want to note, just because you get denied, uh, let's just say you get denied this round, you can still apply the next round and the next round after that. Um, so, don't get discouraged, discouraged if you get uh, uh, denied. 
The phase one um, is the quantitative analysis. Um, if you have more questions on this, I'm happy to jump on a call. But basically what the state is going to look for is they're going to look for your aggregate employee compensation um, along with your total capital investment over the next three to five years. They're, you're going to add that number up and you're going to divide that into the tax credit requests that you're asking. Um, I'm not going to go through the math exercise here because folks are going to go, well, how much tax credit should I ask for? What I will say is that in working with subsidy or any of the folks, advisors on this call that may be working with your businesses, is that that ratio needs to be within the um, within the realm of what past applicants, successful applicants have received. Um, meaning that you don't want your ratio to be extremely high um, because that's going to push you out of the phase one and you will not make it onto phase two. Um, like I said, I can do some back of the napkin math for you on an individual call uh, because many folks will say, hey, is this juice worth the squeeze? Like, do I want to go through this process? How much money am I going to get? And what I would say is within five minutes, five to six minutes, we could probably figure that out for you, okay? Phase two, as I said before, um, so long as you check the box and you're within the competitive ratio of previous awards, um, and um, and I will say this with full disclaimer, this is not coming from the state of California or representative from the governor's office, <clears throat> but if you check the box saying that if not for this tax credit, uh, you, these jobs may or will occur or be hired out of state. Um, uh, if you check that box, you are very likely to make it to phase two. And as I said before, uh, the reason is, is because this is primarily a driver and turned into a business retention tool, okay? I'm not telling you to say anything that's dishonest or uh, gray area. Um, I want to be very clear about that. Um, you want to put honest answers and honest information, but I just, I just want to share that bit of information because a lot of people will ask me, well, what box should I check? And uh, usually we'll go through the exercise of what's factual and accurate. Um, as I said before, probably uh, three to four weeks after that, you, if they're interested in awarding you, they'll uh, go biz, we'll reach out to you, your rep or us and say, hey, we're interested in learning more. We'll fill out some more information and then an agreement will be drafted. And like I said, June 15th will be the committee approval. Um, this is just the dates, as I said before. Um, the last bit of this before we close and leave time for questions and answers is um, uh, kind of what, what a lot of folks um, do not put a lot of information or effort into this part of the application. And I really stress uh, that companies invest the time to do this. If you're going to spend two hours completing this application, you might as well do it right and do it the way that past applicants have been successful. Um, one is the job numbers, the capital investment, and the ratio matters. So it's very important. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but the qualitative nature of your application uh, matters as well. And I'll give an example. Um, one uh, applicant that I've had in the past, she's a woman-owned uh, aerospace and defense manufacturer um, in the Los Angeles area. Extremely profitable, growing probably going to be hiring another 25, 30 employees. This was a, a while back. I'm going to be making significant capital investment in her business. Um, but she's one of very few um, women-owned uh, aerospace and defense manufacturing companies. Um, she's also an immigrant. So, uh, and many of her employees have been with her for over a decade. And she really invests in her employees to make sure that they're upskilled and have um, upward mobility. So they're not just stuck on the production floor. So all of that kind of qualitative uh, uh, information, uh, you want that to be drafted and to put your best foot forward. The state is looking for reasons to uh, understand what you mean to the community and that you're just not another business owner that's just looking to take a tax credit and run and not invest in your community and or uh, employees. Second point, I'll just, I don't want to badger that point, uh, but again, uh, it's turned into a business retention tool. The last one um, is, and I always tell folks is some folks will say, hey, well, I want a million bucks. And after we do the math, that's going to push them out of being competitive. So you want to ask for what you need, not what you necessarily want. And you can always go back to Cal Competes and request more uh, should you meet your hiring and capital investment um, 
uh, numbers and what's in the agreement. So you can always go back and ask for more. Uh, you do not want to get bumped out of the process by asking for too much right up front and then not make it on to phase two. So this is where I put my sales hat on. So I apologize. Um, so subsidy, we're obviously a software company. We're venture capital backed. Um, we're growing. Um, so for VEA members and uh and for, I just did another presentation with Opportunity Stanislaus. But as I mentioned before, we have a cash flow dashboard. So if you want to see all of your cash position along with a projection tool with all your AR, AP, that sort of stuff, we integrate with QuickBooks, major accounting soft softwares, as well as ERPs. Um, we're happy to provide you no cost Cal Competes assistance if you're one of our cash flow dashboard uh, members, which is only $79 a month. I've quoted that number to other companies and fractional CFOs, CPAs, and they were very surprised that how affordable that is. Um, but um, we certainly want to help you apply for Cal Competes along with other incentive programs. And uh, you get access to all of that by being one of our customers. We're offering one last offer as well as in addition to um, uh, the $79 offer for uh, our uh, cash flow dashboard customers. Uh, any VEA members, if you book a time to chat with me, um, we're willing to spend 1500 bucks to 2000 bucks of our own money. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, to do one of the following, and you can pick one of the following. I don't need to go through every single one of them, uh, but uh, the soft copy will go out and this offer will stand. Um, you can also text me. My contact information is going to be on the last slide here before we move to questions. Uh, but we'll either pay a bookkeeper to clean up or update your books. Um, one of our bookkeepers, she's been working in the family manufacturing business for uh, 16 years or 14 years, um, grew up in manufacturing, knows her stuff, will reimburse you for your CPA uh, annual filing. We have fractional CFO offering of CFOs that has specific long-term um, uh, experience working with small manufacturers or other small businesses. So we're offering uh, one of their uh, one of them up for a 60-day engagement and or will offer you a $1,500 cash bonus to sign on your next employee um, so that you can attract quality talent. So um, that's it. I will uh, leave time for questions. You can either pop them in the chat um, or Sonia, I'll let you decide how you want to run point on that. My contact information is here. I am uh, usually on my cell phone. Um, if not, you can schedule time through my calendar link or email me. Um, if you are interested in taking advantage of any of those offers, uh, please text me, um, and I'd love to get a headcount, figure out, you know, is our is our value proposition strong, um, and if so, we can get you started right away if you decide to work with us. So that's us. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Gil. Wow, this is great. So learning that there are there's a hundred billion dollars out there available in tax credits. And that you guys have helped 13 companies to get a hold of 18 million in tax credits is really exciting to see. So, folks, uh, if you want to put questions in the chat, please do. I'll get us started with something. Now, before I do, Gil, I think you used a, um, a, a an abbreviation BRP. Did you use something called a BRP earlier on in the presentation? Uh, no, I said ERP. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. If you could explain that for anyone in the audience who isn't familiar with the ERP. I will give you the official de uh, definition of that, but it's an enterprise resource planning tool. Um, it it can be everything. I'm sure you all have heard of NetSuite or, uh, or Sage, that sort of stuff. So it's usually in the manufacturing space. So if you are, of course, I'm getting a telemarketing call right now. Um, <laughs> So an ERP, it's usually in the manufacturing space, but it's an enterprise resource planning software. Uh, most companies that are smaller, um, you're not going to have an ERP. You're usually going to be operating in the QuickBooks environment. We do integrate with QuickBooks Desktop as well as QuickBooks Online, as well as a number of other accounting systems, Xero, uh, et cetera. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Now, what about, now we're hearing a lot about the employee retention tax credit. And so I'm hoping you can talk a little bit about that one. And then secondly, um, you know, um, BizFed is one of our counterpart organizations in the LA area chamber area um, 
LA Area Chamber of Commerce. We've got Mayor Bass, who in her you know, first day in office declared a state of emergency regarding homelessness and our homelessness crisis. I understand um, there is such a thing as a homeless hiring tax credit. And um, one of the things that a lot of our business organizations are promoting is for the business community to be a part of addressing the homelessness crisis by utilizing this homeless hiring tax credit. So I know I mentioned to you a little bit earlier that, you know, we were very intrigued about that and wondering, you know, how can we get some great benefit for our businesses and our network while helping address the homelessness crisis? So if you can talk about the ERTC, Employee Retention Tax Credit and Homeless Hiring Tax Credit a little bit. Yeah, so the Employee Retention Tax Credit, obviously, um, that's a federal program that is still going on. Uh, it's a lot of folks think that or they will hear that, oh, it's been expired. Um, that's not necessarily the case. You can essentially what you're able to do is uh, any employees that were on payroll that you retain, you can take advantage of this tax credit and go back from Q1 of 2020 um, and take advantage of that all the way up to Q3 of 2021. Um, 2021, did I say that correctly? Yeah. Um, you did have to have uh, either an 85% drop in revenue from one quarter to the subsequent quarter of the following year and show that. Um, and as I said, we do this math for you in, uh, in our platform and or you had to be subject to some sort of partial or full government shutdown. So I know LA County had some shutdowns, people weren't going into the office, um, so on and so forth, especially in the restaurant industry. So if you did have some form of government shutdown on the county state level, then that case can be made uh, for you qualifying for the credit and it can be up to $26,000 per employee. Great, great. Now you mentioned on um, the three different types of government incentives, there were grants and tax credits and, um, and a third I'm forgetting at the moment, I have my notes here. Mm -hmm. um, now, I was curious about, and you said that the grants only about 2% uh, of, you know, like maybe it's under 2% that actually the uh, funding goes out that uh, through that vehicle. And I'm wondering about the SBIR. Um, what is that? Small Business? Uh, yes, Small Business Innovation Research Grant, I believe that is the acronym, yeah. Or the yes, acronym. Innovation Research. So it kind of has to do with the R&D, right? Research and development for a company. Could you talk about the SBIR and how we can get more companies in the Valley taking advantage of those funds? Yes, yeah, so, so that is something that's administered through the feds. There are SBIR grants um, through different federal agencies. Um, now, the short of it is, is that it can be uh, up to $1 million. Um, it is what I tell people is it's long money. So it's going to be a big application for a check that you likely won't see for a long time. Um, but it essentially, if you have a new, compelling, interesting technology that you're testing out, um, and like I said, there's different federal departments that have different priorities, Department of Energy versus Defense, et cetera, uh, then you can certainly apply for SBIR. It is a lengthy process. Um, I've never personally uh, gone through an SBIR application with a company. I, I know of several consultants that help folks with that and folks that I'm happy to introduce you to them. Um, it is going to be heavy focused on the manufacturing sector. Um, and or uh, uh, with the heavy R&D focus. So if you're in a service-based business, um, obviously you're not gonna qualify for that. Um, one thing I was gonna mention too, you had asked me about the homeless hiring tax credit. Um, all, in that one pager, I think on the slide that I had the five or six most underutilized programs, I'll include that in that one pager. Um, I know that there's some parameters uh, for that, that you're not, I want to say that you're only entitled to up to two hires to claim the total amount. Um, and their folks, I believe the hiring tax credit is for folks that were obviously formerly uh, challenged, homeless, et cetera, um, and or the unhoused. Um, and then I can, like I said, I'll send that in that bullet point with uh, with the one pager along with R&D tax credit, partial sales tax, et cetera. Um, the last thing that I was going to say too, and many of you have probably been notified of, of it since you're in LA County, is Lendistry is obviously administering the uh, LA County's uh, Small Business Grant Program. 
Um, phase two of that has opened up. I want to say it opened up this week. Uh, so uh, it can be anywhere from, what was it, 100000 all the way up to a million dollars for companies that are under $2 million in gross revenues. Um, and of course, there's all the parameters that you had to have a dip in revenue and that sort of stuff. But if you want help in applying for that program as well, um, we're helping a couple applicants right, or one applicant right now go through the, the process. Um, we can't necessarily go into the portal for you, but we're certainly able to give you guidance and what are they looking for, how to get prepared, how to put your best foot forward. Um, no guarantee on that. Obviously, it's a grant program. It's going to be very competitive in nature, but happy to support you on that as well. I think you're on mute. Oh, I think you're still on mute. So near you're on mute. Oh, thank you. I didn't even realize that. Thank you so much for letting me know. <laughs> um, so I was saying I, I put a link to the grant program in the chat so everybody can check that out. And it's great to know that you can help with those applications. They can be complicated sometimes. Um, I wanted to ask um, about you, you mentioned, you know, check with folks can check with their accountants about some of this information. How do how does subsidy compare to an accounting firm? What do you do? They do, don't do. How do people know if they want to? work with their accountant or you or both? Yeah, so I always tell folks that we work in collaboration with, not competition with accountants, CPAs, um, and otherwise. Um, usually uh, usually it, it works like this. If a company works to work directly with us, we are going to be um, a fraction of the cost of what uh, you're going to go hire a consultant to help you apply for these programs. Um, I'd probably say significantly, if not half, if not more than half, uh, uh, less expensive than hiring an individual consultant. If your CPA wants to handle this information or any of these applications, we're happy to work with them as well. Um, we're a software company first, so we're always looking to support the small business owner, but we also want to support those people around you. Um, so if your CPA has questions or accountant has questions about various programs or just wants to pick my brain, happy to spend time with them and uh and uh share whatever insight i can awesome now another question i noticed on the irs website i've been intrigued with this there's this list of business tax credits i put this link in the chat too for folks who might want to check these out now what what can you say about these like are, are these this is pretty much what's available is and i mean you're talking about california competes is actually a state uh, tax credit, so that's separate from these federal ones. But um, are is this kind of the list of items that you work with people to see what they're eligible for for any of these? <laughs> or is there a connection to this list here that the IRS puts out uh, compared to what you you do with folks? Yeah, no, I mean, so so our our platform has um, most, if not all, of the federal and state incentive programs. Um, I'd say that we're well, actually we're in California, Ohio. Uh, Pennsylvania um, right now. So we have most of the, almost all of the federal programs and then most of the state programs, the appropriate ones for those three states so far. Um, most of those programs that you were just looking at there, a lot of those are going to be for micro businesses. So those folks that are self-employed, um, that's really what a lot of those programs are geared towards. Um, if you have W-2 employees or C-Corp, S-Corp, um, that's kind of where our strength is and most of the folks that at least have one or two full-time employees, but that's not to say that we can't support somebody that's self-employed or uh, doesn't have any employees. I'm happy to happy to contribute time and, and resources. Terrific. Great. I don't see any hands raised and I don't see any questions in the chat. So um, what I'm thinking is uh, oftentimes with the Alliance, since we're a close lit, a close knit network of businesses, most of which are located in the Valley, I want to encourage folks to raise your virtual hand if you'd like to introduce yourself, introduce your business, um, and uh, maybe uh, we can get to know each other a little bit better, um, and then maybe some questions will come up as we're networking here with Gil. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Hi, Lupe. I see Lupe is here, and she posted some information about what she's working on in the chat, which is terrific. Hello, since you called me out, I might as well say hello to everybody. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to offer uh, a quick 20 minute um, uh, Zoom meeting with some experts regarding the tax credits. So I left my email, should any of you be interested in looking at what you have. That includes nonprofits, 
and it does have some parameters, but they'll be able to see if you qualify, if your business does. So please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Great, Lupe, it's a wonderful resource as well. And I want to acknowledge John Parker, uh, uh, our, our board member and chair, co-chair of our Economic Development Committee. Hi, John. Good morning. Hey, um, I think this is great because we work with a lot of bigger companies. I'm a builder. We do work. And I know I was in one huge industry in the Valley here and they have something like 60 accountants in an accounting department. And mostly what they do is look for grants for the company nationally. So so often smaller companies we don't think that this is available to us and even the employee retention credit that we took advantage of and we got a few hundred thousand from this because we did maintain the um, the employment and we did go way down in sales over the last few years but we had to convince our cpa that he had to go for it because cpas generally speaking are great at doing accounting and keeping the revenue but not always looking out like for what what gail is talking about this morning so i think this is going to be great for businesses wow. to take advantage of Terrific, John. Okay, thank you for that feedback. A couple of questions did come up in the chat. Um, Gil, I'm not sure that this is your sweet spot, but you did talk about some of your knowledge about grants like the LA County grant. Um, can you talk about nonprofit grants for youth if you have any resources on that? And I will follow up because I do have some resources on that as well. Yeah, we don't work with any nonprofits. Um, so uh, the answer is I, I would not be the best best fit for kind of speaking to uh, that. I mean, obviously the shuttered venue grant that's expired. That was a federal program. California rolled out one for venues uh, that were affected by COVID, um, but we do not work with any nonprofits yet. So I, I'm not, I'm not qualified to speak to that. Hi, my name is Gwen Gatson Long. And we set up as a small corporation. We have one employee, but that employee, everything we do is virtual. And our one employee is actually in Texas. Uh, so, you know, we filed with the Texas workforce for that one employee. Um, I worked full time uh, in the insurance industry uh, until January 6th. And so anything, in, you know, I'm looking to find grants so that I can contribute my time and effort, you know, to the business, uh, along with the one employee, um, can you work with someone like myself? Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Gwen. I, I, um, the answer, the answer is yes. I mean, we're, we're happy to work with and support, um, as I said, anyone with one employee all the way up to, to under 500 employees. What I do want to kind of reiterate, though, is um, whenever we do, the, whenever I do these presentations, um, grants are a, a very small portion of what's available out there. So, what I would say is, out, absent from the LA County grant that just came out, um, there's not going to be a ton out there. Um, there is a really good resource, and he's a he's a good friend of mine, Sedale. Uh, he started a company called OpenGrants.ai. I'll put a link in here. Um, okay. If you're in the nonprofit space, if you're doing something that's pretty unique, it's a whole database of statewide grants as well as some private sector grants. And more importantly, what they do is they help match you with folks that can actually. Oh, help that you. will be great. That yeah, I, I, that will be great. That sounds like something we can use. Okay, great. If I may, I'm just going to jump out there. I happen to work primarily in the nonprofit sector. I've been doing this for 30 years. So there are ways in which to do research for grants and specific to your programs. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. I'll, it'll be my pleasure. It'd be great for Gwen and Lupe to connect. Thank you. Two yes, fantastic ladies in our network. Now, there was another question. I did put some uh, resources in the chat too, Gwen. I'm not sure if you know about the Center for Nonprofit Management downtown or Valley Nonprofit Resource Center at CSUN. They specialize in nonprofit management and um, that one at CSUN specializes in the Valley. And those are two great resources. Plus there are some websites where grants are, um, are listed in addition to open grants, which is a good one too that... Um, yeah, the only the, the problem is that we're not set up as a nonprofit. We're set up as a, a corporation. So um, and that's one of the challenges that we have, whether or not to um, 
you know, go back and set up. So I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm working at, I'm actually working with SCORE. I've actually set up to meet with an advisor at, um, uh, I want to say CBO, um, EOG at EOG. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching out to everyone. So, but Lupe, I, I'll, I'll work with you and, and um, see which direction to go, if that'll be helpful, if we can do that. Absolutely. And should you decide to have a nonprofit, there is a way in which to, while you get your 501c3 to have a fiduciary nonprofit accept your donation. So we'll talk about it in, in detail. So okay. So I'll set up a meeting. Thank you. Okay, terrific. And I see Keith also had a question about nonprofit grants. So Keith, I think my answers then were directed toward you and you'll see those resources in the chat. We did have another question from Donita about grants being for businesses established in uh, 2019 to 2021. What about newer businesses, startup funding? Do you have ideas, Gil, about startup funding? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one, one thing that we're uh, so, so just to back up, my, one of my co-founders is his second startup. He exited the first one, sold it to Pandora. Um, so while we have our core business as subsidy, is you know we're a small business owner as well, and we are venture capital backed. Um, one of our main folks are, is Sloss and Co. out of Los Angeles. Um, that's one of our investors on our cap table. But with that said, um, I'd say just reach out to me, and if I, if I can introduce you to folks in our network. Um, we're happy to do so. Um, but the answer is there's not much there. Um, and I always don't like giving that bad news, but um, I'd rather give people a fast no rather than a slow maybe. Um, there's just not going to be a ton of grants out there for small businesses. I think that's a kind of misinformation that's been out there for a long time. Um, now, it's not impossible, but um, it's, it's just it's few and far between. But I'm happy to connect with you and chat and connect you with folks and in our network, the subsidy network as well. Great, great. Our network includes a variety of lending partners from the whole spectrum. So startup and then angel investors and many, many lenders. And so there are some folks who specialize in crowdfunding to help startups really leverage their, their networks. Facebook networks and others to turn that into startup capital. There are folks who have uh, micro loans for startups like Lendistry and Opportunity Fund. Those are some of the partners that we work with who, that are interested in working with, um, with some organizations that are just starting up or maybe have challenges on their credit or they have no business credit and they're looking to build. So there are some partners. There's a whole category of financial institutions called CDFI community development, um, financial institutions, I think is what that stands for. Okay. And they do alternative lending. So if you, you can't, for whatever reason, qualify for a traditional bank loan, um, you might be able to qualify for a loan and startups kind of sometimes take that, um, that direction. And we work with different CDFIs, Opportunity Fund and Lendistry are CDFIs, as well as Mission Valley Bank and yeah. uh, some other great folks who specialize in the Valley have the Valley in mind and our businesses and helping them to succeed and can build relationships for the long term as you start up and then you keep growing to help you with your capital needs as you go on. So a lot of times with the for-profit companies, it really is about turning a profit more so than getting a grant. A grant might be an extra add-on icing on the cake if you check the box and you qualify um, for some special circumstance, but for the most part, we got to find ways of getting your company to profitability uh, without uh, uh, without that kind of grant support, but just from your uh, from your revenue uh, generation and from uh, attaining capital to uh, invest, and then that you'll be able to pay back from the proceeds as you grow. So there are some thoughts on that. Any other comments or questions about all this good stuff that we've been talking about? Okay, terrific. Well, Gil, oh my gosh, any last comments from you, Gil? You're such a treasure trove of wisdom and expertise. We wanna, did anything else come up for you that we should, any parting thoughts you wanna leave us with? No, I mean, I, we're, we're in the same boat as you all are. We're a small business owner and we're very blessed and lucky to be working with other small business owners and we're super passionate about this. So 
um, you know, just reach out, let's connect. Um, if you know of other folks that you think may be able to use our services or we could provide value to, let us know as well. Um, those offers that I posted, um, uh, look, those are very compelling. So uh, if you have a fit and have a need, please take us up on that and uh, we'll go from there. I look forward to chatting with folks. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Gil, I want to thank you so much for taking the time and sharing this. You know, tax credits, it's such a great, a huge area of opportunity. And yet, uh, it's so it can be confusing, and it's kind of shrouded in mystery. So it's great to have we're, we're big proponents of coaching and mentoring and business advising here at the Alliance. And it's great when we have specialists in our network who can really help people uh, look at their customized situation, and then you know, see what they're eligible for, and then help them to actually get that capital. It really impacts our local economy when companies get the resources they need. And we really appreciate your work. We really appreciate our partnership too with Subsidy. So not only is Subsidy presenting today, but we have a wonderfully unique partnership where Subsidy helps the Alliance um, find any kind of credits that we might be eligible for as an organization. And um, we're so thankful that Subsidy is one of our partners and our contributors um, as the Alliance um, identifies businesses that can benefit from this resource. Uh, Subsidy is very supportive of the Alliance as well, and we're so thankful for that and excited about what that bodes for our partnership in the coming months as we continue to work together to help companies in our network get access to these tax credits. I want to remind everyone, if you haven't heard already, about our Valley Growth Lab. Our next one is on Thursday, March 9th, so a couple of days away. And what we do is this is a new program that we created. It's an in-person meetup at our business center in Sherman Oaks on Van Nuys Boulevard. And it's a great way to drill down deeper into some of the ideas that have come up in our next level growth programs and online education like today. We'll get together. We'll have five or six of our executives in residence. Those are mentors who are providing pro bono support um, on various topics like procurement and contracting. We have somebody on access to capital and lending who's going to be with us. Um, we have someone who's a couple of people who are going to focus on um, utilities rebates. So if you're operating in a facility and you're wondering how can you recapture some of that, the expenditures that you've been spending on utilities um, and operate in a more environmentally sustainable ways, we're going to have a couple of mentors who can sit down with you. You can bring your laptop, bring your information if you want, or you can just have a one-on-one -on -one or small group conversation with folks around how you can actually you know, kind of tap into some of these resources. So if, if you do like in-person networking, in, in addition to these wonderful uh, kind of webinar formats, then consider coming. Uh, you can get more information there of, at the valley.net slash events, and you'll see information about all of our upcoming programs. We have online programs like today. We have our in-person meetup like Valley Growth Lab. Uh, we have committee meetings that focus on specific topics for moving our region forward, like economic development, education and workforce policy, um, housing and homelessness uh, through our Livable and Sustainable Communities Committee. We talk about housing and homelessness and environmental sustainability and transportation systems in our region and how our residents and our business owners need a, a city, a, a cities that are smartly developed and a great smart regional urban planning. So I encourage you to check out the valley.net slash events if you want to be a part of the Valley's growth and development in these ways. Um, and then finally, if you want to enroll in our business assistance program, it's completely free to our clients, thanks to our sponsors, and you can get information there at the valley.net slash assistance. I think we have covered the bases. I'm going to check the chat one last time. And while I do that, I really want to thank Erica Gass, who is on our team and helps us to keep everything moving forward logistically. Thanks, Erica, so much. And, and the whole team really appreciate you. Well, with that, I think we've come to the end of a, of a great program. Gil, thanks again for your expertise and your partnership. We're really excited about more businesses in the Valley taking advantage of, of of these tax credits and getting your help. Uh, so everyone, you know, keep in touch with the Alliance. I put my email in the chat. If there are other types of support or uh, resource information that you need, you let us know and we will shake some trees in our network and make sure that we get our Valley businesses what we need to thrive and grow right here in the Valley where we're planted. With that, I let you all go. Have a fantastic day, everybody. And we'll see you at the next program. Take good care.